Christianity is most commonly known by Protestantism, but there are two large churches that were founded in Africa 2,000 years ago before the establishment of Protestantism and before dividing of Christianity. Those are Egyptian Coptic Orthodox and Ethiopian Orthodox Tuahedo churches. The Coptic Orthodox Church also known as the Coptic Orthodox Patriarchate of Alexandria, is an Oriental Orthodox Christian church based in Egypt, servicing Africa and the Middle East. The head of the church and the see of Alexandria is the Pope of Alexandria on the Holy Apostolic See of St. Mark, who also carries the title of Father of Fathers, Shepherd of Shepherds, Ecumenical Judge and the Thirteenth among the Apostles. The See of Alexandria is titular, and today, the Coptic Pope presides from St. Mark's Coptic Orthodox Cathedral in the Abbasia district in Cairo. The Church follows the Coptic rite for its liturgy, prayer and devotional patrimony. The Church has approximately 25 million members worldwide and is Egypt's largest Christian denomination. According to its tradition, the Coptic Church was established by Mark, an apostle, an evangelist, during the middle of the first century, AD 42. The Ian regards itself as the subject of many prophecies in the Old Testament. Isaiah the prophet, in chapter 19, verse 19 says, In that day there will be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a pillar to the Lord at its border. The first Christians in Egypt were common people who spoke Egyptian Coptic. There were also Alexandrian Jewish people such as Theophilus, whom Luke the Evangelist addresses in the introductory chapter of his Gospel. When the church was founded by Mark during the reign of the Roman Emperor Nero, a great multitude of native Egyptians, as opposed to Greeks or Jews, embraced the Christian faith. Coptic Language in the Church The Coptic language is a universal language used in Coptic churches in every country. It descends from ancient Egyptian and uses the Coptic alphabet, a script descended from the Greek alphabet with added characters derived from the Demotic script. Today, Coptic is used primarily for liturgical purposes. Many of the hymns in the liturgy are in Coptic and have been passed down for several thousand years. The language is used to preserve Egypt's original language, which was banned by the Arab invaders, who ordered Arabic to be used instead. Christianity spread throughout Egypt within half a century of Mark's arrival in Alexandria, as is clear from the New Testament writings found in Bonassa, in Middle Egypt, which date around the year AD 200, and a fragment of the Gospel of John, written in Coptic, which was found in Upper Egypt and can be dated to the first half of the second century. In the second century, Christianity began to spread to the rural areas. And scriptures were translated into the local languages, namely Coptic, Catechetical School of Alexandria. The Catechetical School of Alexandria is the oldest catechetical school in the world. Jerome records that the Christian School of Alexandria was founded by Mark himself. Around AD 42, under the leadership of the scholar Pantaneus, the School of Alexandria became an important institution of religious learning, where students were taught by scholars such as Athenagoras, Clement, Didymus, and the native Egyptian Origen, who was considered the father of theology and who was also active in the field of commentary in comparative biblical studies, the Theological College of the Catechetical School was re-established in 1893, Coptic monasticism, many Egyptian Christians went to the desert during the 3rd century, and remained there to pray and work and dedicate their lives to seclusion and worship of God. This was the beginning of the monastic movement, which was organized by Anthony the Great, Paul of Thebes, the world's first anchorite, Macarius the Great and Pacomius the Cenobite in the 4th century. Christian monasticism was born in Egypt and was instrumental in the formation of the Coptic Orthodox Church character of submission, simplicity, and humility, thanks to the teachings and writings of the great fathers of Egypt's deserts. By the end of the 5th century, there were hundreds of monasteries and thousands of cells and caves scattered throughout the Egyptian desert. A great number of these monasteries are still flourishing and have new vocations to this day, role and participation in the ecumenical councils, First Council of Nicaea, 
in the 4th century, an Alexandrian presbyter named Arius began a theological dispute about the nature of Christ that spread throughout the Christian world and is now known as Arianism. The Ecumenical Council of Nicaea AD 325 was convened by Constantine after the Pope Alexander I of Alexandria requested to hold a council to respond to heresies. Under the presidency of Hosius of Cordova to resolve the dispute. This eventually led to the formulation of the symbol of faith, also known as the Nicene Creed. 16. The creed was based largely on the teaching put forth by a man who eventually would become Athanasius of Alexandria, the chief opponent of Arius, and 20th Bishop of Alexandria and therefore a pope according to Coptic Christians, Second Council of Constantinople, in the year AD 381. Pope Timothy I of Alexandria presided over the Second Ecumenical Council known as the Ecumenical Council of Constantinople to judge Macedonius, who denied the divinity of the Holy Spirit. This council completed the Nicene Creed with this confirmation of the divinity of the Holy Spirit. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets and in one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the remission of sins and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the coming age, Amen. Third Council of Ephesus, Coptic icon in the Coptic altar of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, Jerusalem. Another theological dispute in the 5th century occurred over the teachings of Nestorius. The Patriarch of Constantinople who taught that God the Word was not hypostatically joined with human nature, but rather dwelt in the man Jesus. As a consequence of this, he denied the title, Mother of God, Theotokos, to the Virgin Mary, declaring her instead to be, Mother of Christ, Christotokos, the council confirmed the teachings of Athanasius and confirmed the title of Mary as, Mother of God. It also clearly stated that anyone who separated Christ into two hypostases was anathema. As Cyril had said that there is, one nature, or one hypostasis, for God the Word incarnate, Mia Physis tu Theu Logus Isarchamine. The introduction to the Creed, still recited in the Church, is formulated as follows, We magnify you O Mother of the True Light and we glorify you O Saint and Mother of God, Theotokos, for you have borne unto us the Saviour of the world. Glory to you O our Master and King, Christ, the Pride of the Apostles, the Crown of the Martyrs, the rejoicing of the righteous. Firmness of the churches and the forgiveness of sins. We proclaim the Holy Trinity in one Godhead, we worship Him, we glorify Him, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord bless us, Amen. Not dissimilar to the Axion Estin chant still used in Orthodoxy. Fourth Council of Chalcedon, when in AD 451 Emperor Marcion attempted to heal divisions in the Church, the response of Pope Dioscorus, the Pope of Alexandria who was later exiled was that the Emperor should not intervene in the affairs of the Church. It was at Chalcedon that the Emperor, through the imperial delegates, enforced harsh disciplinary measures against Pope Dioscorus in response to his boldness. In AD 449, Pope Dioscorus headed the Second Council of Ephesus, called the Robber Council, by Chalcedonian historians. It held to the Miaphysite formula which upheld the Christology of one incarnate nature of God the Word, and upheld Eutyx, now considered a heretic by the Coptic Orthodox Church, claiming that he was Orthodox. The Council of Chalcedon summoned Dioscorus three times to appear at the Council, after which he was deposed. The Council of Chalcedon further deposed him for his support of Eutyx, but not necessarily for Eutychian Monophysitism. Dioscorus appealed to the conciliar fathers to allow for a more Miaphysite interpretation of Christology at the council. But was denied. Following his being deposed, the Coptic Church and its faithful felt unfairly underrepresented at the council and oppressed politically by the Byzantine Empire. After the Byzantines appointed Proterius of Alexandria as Patriarch to represent the Chalcedonian Church, the Coptic Church appointed their own Patriarch Timothy Eleurus and broke from the State Church of the Roman Empire. In terms of Christology, the Oriental Orthodox, non-Chalcedonians, understanding is that Christ is, one nature, the Logos incarnate, of the full humanity and full divinity. 
The Chalcedonians' understanding is that Christ is recognized in two natures, full humanity and full divinity. Oriental Orthodoxy contends that such a formulation is no different from what the Nestorians teach. From that point onward, Alexandria would have two patriarchs, the non-Chalcedonian native Egyptian one, now known as the Coptic Pope of Alexandria and Patriarch of all Africa on the Holy Apostolic See of St. Mark, and the Melkite or Imperial Patriarch, now known as the Greek Orthodox Patriarch of Alexandria. Almost the entire Egyptian population rejected the terms of the Council of Chalcedon and remained faithful to the native Egyptian Church, now known as the Coptic Orthodox Church. By anathematizing Pope Leo because of the tone and content of his tome, as per Alexandrian theology perception, Pope Dioscorus was found guilty of doing so without due process, in other words, the tome of Leo was not a subject of heresy in the first place, but it was a question of questioning the reasons behind not having it either acknowledged or read at the Second Council of Ephesus in AD 449. Pope Dioscorus of Alexandria was never labeled as a heretic by the Council's canons. Copts also believe that the Pope of Alexandria was forcibly prevented from attending the third congregation of the council from which he was ousted. Apparently the result of a conspiracy tailored by the Roman delegates, before the current positive era of Eastern and Oriental Orthodox dialogues, Chalcedonians sometimes used to call the non-Chalcedonians, Monophysites, though the Coptic Orthodox Church in reality regards Monophysitism as a heresy. The Chalcedonian doctrine in turn came to be known as Diophysite. A term that comes closer to Coptic Orthodoxy is Myophysite, which refers to a conjoined nature for Christ, both human and divine. United indivisibly in the incarnate Logos, from Chalcedon to the Arab conquest of Egypt, prior to Chalcedon, the imperial church's main division stemmed from Nestorianism, eventually leading the Church of the East to declare its independence in AD 424. After the Council of Chalcedon in AD 451, the Coptic Church and its hierarchy felt suspicious of what they believed were Nestorian elements within the Chalcedonian Church. As a result, the anti-Chalcedon partisan, Timotheo Zelurus, consigned himself to depose the Chalcedonian Pope of Alexandria, Proterius of Alexandria, and to set himself up as the Pope of Alexandria in opposition to the Chalcedonian Church. Copts suffered under the rule of the Byzantine Empire. The Melkite Patriarchs Appointed by the emperors as both spiritual leaders and civil governors, massacred those Egyptians they considered heretics. Many were tortured and martyred in attempts to force their acceptance of the Chalcedonian terms, but the Egyptians remained loyal to the Cyrillian Myophysitism. One of the most renowned Egyptian saints of the period is Samuel the Confessor, Muslim conquest of Egypt, the Muslim invasion of Egypt took place in AD 639. Relying on eyewitness testimony, Bishop John of Nikiu in his chronicle provides a graphic account of the invasion from a Coptic perspective. Although the chronicle has only been preserved in an Ethiopic, Guizi, text, some scholars believe that it was originally written in Coptic. John's account is critical of the invaders who he says, despoiled the Egyptians of their possessions and dealt cruelly with them, and he vividly details the atrocities committed by the Muslims against the native population during the conquest, and when with great toil and exertion they had cast down the walls of the city, they forthwith made themselves masters of it. And put to the sword thousands of its inhabitants and of the soldiers, and they gained an enormous booty, and took the women and children captive and divided them amongst themselves, and they made that city a desolation. Though critical of the Muslim commander, Amr ibn al-Az, who, during the campaign, he says, had no mercy on the Egyptians, and did not observe the covenant they had made with him, for he was of a barbaric race, he does note that following the completion of the conquest, Amr took none of the property of the churches, and he committed no act of spoliation or plunder and he preserved them throughout all his days. Despite the political upheaval, the Egyptian population remained mainly Christian. However, gradual conversions to Islam over the centuries had changed Egypt from a Christian to a largely Muslim country by the end of the 12th century. Another scholar writes that a combination of repression of Coptic revolts, Arab Muslim immigration, and Coptic conversion to Islam resulted in the demographic decline of the Copts. 
Egypt's Umayyad rulers taxed Christians at a higher rate than Muslims, driving merchants towards Islam and undermining the economic base of the Coptic Church. Although the Coptic Church did not disappear, the Umayyad tax policies made it difficult for the Church to retain the Egyptian elites, under Islamic rule, 640-1800, in 969, Egypt entered the Fatimid dynasty, in Egypt from 969 to 1171, who adopted a largely favorable attitude toward the Christians. The major exception to this was the persecution led by Caliph al-Hakim between 1004 and 1013, which included clothing regulations, prohibition of publicly celebrating Christian festivals, and dismissal of Christian and Jewish functionaries. However, at the end of his reign al-Hakim rescinded these measures, allowing the Copts to regain privileged positions within the administration. The Coptic patriarchal residents moved from Alexandria to Cairo during the Patriarchate of Cyril II, 1078-92. This move was at the demand of the Grand Vizier Badr al-Jamali, who insisted that the Pope establish himself in the capital. When Saladin entered Egypt in 1163, this ushered in a government focused on defending Sunni Islam. Christians were again discriminated against, and meant to show modesty in their religious ceremonies and buildings. In 1798, the French invaded Egypt unsuccessfully and the British helped the Turks to regain power over Egypt under the Muhammad Ali dynasty, from the 19th century to the 1952 revolution. The position of Copts began to improve early in the 19th century under the stability and tolerance of the Muhammad Ali dynasty. The Coptic community ceased to be regarded by the state as an administrative unit. In 1855 the jizya tax was abolished by Sa'id Pasha. Shortly thereafter, the Copts started to serve in the Egyptian army, Coptic monks, between 1898 and 1914, towards the end of the 19th century, the Coptic church underwent phases of new development. In 1853, Pope Cyril IV established the first modern Coptic schools, including the first Egyptian school for girls. He also founded a printing press, which was only the second national press in the country. The Pope established very friendly relations with other denominations, to the extent that when the Greek patriarch in Egypt had to absent himself from the country for a long period of time, he left his church under the guidance of the Coptic patriarch. The Theological College of the School of Alexandria was re-established in 1893. It began its new history with five students, one of whom was later to become its dean. Today it has campuses in Alexandria and Cairo, and in various dioceses throughout Egypt, as well as outside Egypt. It has campuses in New Jersey, Los Angeles, Sydney, Melbourne, and London, where potential clergymen and other qualified men and women study many subjects, including theology, church history, missionary studies, and the Coptic language.